With God, there is always more. More love, more life, more freedom. Welcome to Zoe's Exploring More with Michael Thompson. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along our journey, but He takes great care to see that we do not mistake any of them for home. Join me and the team as we explore the kingdom together, discovering the deep truths and offering encouragement for the journey. There is always more. Welcome, friends and allies, to the Exploring More podcast with Michael Thompson. And I'm Michael, hanging out with SJ and Greg still, Saylor. Still, still I am still Michael. And hanging out with SJ and Greg Saylor's incredible Zoe Avenger team members. Man, I'm excited about this. We've been talking about this for some months, mm -hmm. and it's actually come from a lot of our allies. A few requests. I mean, some people, how do you guys pray? Yep. You know, how do you pray? And if I was going to help somebody know how you pray, where would I send them, Greg? Mm -hmm. And so I said, maybe we should do a podcast, podcast about on that. it. Yep. So we'll continue to explore what the title of this is, if it's going to be how we pray, or if it's going to be talking and listening to God, or conversations with God. Right. I mean, we, what is prayer? Yeah, you got to start right there, right? Prayer and our personal histories with it, mm -hmm. what, what it's come to mean. You know, so let's go there. History with prayer. I got to confess, man, I saw it as something pretty formal, you know, done in church, grew up in church. So there would be some prayers that would be recited or they'd grab things from a historical narrative, you know, of church history and bring something, you know, to the pulpit. So it was early in my heart and my inner psyche. It was very formal mm -hmm. and yeah, very different than conversation over coffee. Right you know, in terms of my perception of it. And the words needed to be a certain way. Yeah, I think, too, the things that you learn when you're a child, you know, like, God is great, God is good, let yeah. us thank Him for, for our food. food. Oh, we did that you one. Know, somebody, now I lay me down to sleep, mm -hmm. pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before, I, I'm, I'm six, it's right? Pleasant if I should die before sleep. I wake, yeah. I pray the Lord my soul to take. I mean, we... Yeah. Could I die in my sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, somehow. Good yeah. Those are good and appropriate for those times of our lives, of course, but I think there's a graduation that goes on as we mm -hmm. draw in deeper intimacy with God. But I think as we know about wounds, vows, and agreements, and we've talked about that on the show many times, some people stay there mm -hmm. and there's more, Yeah, as we yeah. like to say it. So what's your history then, Greg, with prayer? Well, that was definitely my history. I started out there, you know, I mean, my parents brought me into the memory verse of prayer. So I learned those things, you know, we had those prayers at meals, we had those prayers at nighttime. And I think for the longest time, that's what I believed prayer was like. And then it kind of moved toward Sunday mornings, mm -hmm. you know, and the Sunday morning daily prayer, if you will, at church. And that was usually the same way too, right? And it was usually before the offering at church. And so there was that kind of prayer. And I think I might have grown up into that next. And then after that, it was like kind of the buffet of prayer. You know, what do I want? Right. And sure. then forgive me because... I'm a dirty dog, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and I grew up in a more fundamental kind of background. And so, you know, your heart is bad and you better pray for forgiveness. Like yeah. you said, you got yeah. saved 40, 11 times. times. Yeah. The Catholic faith, no different, you know, for those who have been through that. I mean, it's after confession, say this many of these prayers, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's kind of like the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, right. it's another 14 Hail you, Marys you and can, 13 Our Father. We said it every day in school. And honestly, I was never invited into anything else. Hmm. This is the way it is. Right. Yeah, I didn't grow up in church, as I've shared on the podcast before. Didn't even have a relationship with God until I was 35 years old. And yet we prayed the now I lay me down to sleep as a kid. I don't remember as much praying before a meal, but it was never explained why we even do that. It was more of a family tradition than any kind of conversation with God. Right. Again, which is fine. But in the context of the kingdom, yeah, I'm not sure how much it matters, you know, when you do that. And then, of course, knowing the Lord's Prayer, you know, our Father who out in heaven, yeah, and so on. But again, not really knowing the meaning behind it, never having it explained, it was just a tradition. Mm -hmm. And I didn't pick up that tradition even until joining the fire department when some of the other guys were praying. You know, SJ, too, I think it was devoid of intimacy which we'll get a lot into as we go throughout this series on prayer. 
but it was so mechanical. Yeah. Yeah, it's obligation. It's not intimacy. Yeah. Well, I'll confess, there was a part of it that felt kind of like that scene in The Wizard of Oz when Dorothy and her friends are coming in to see the wizard, and it's just this thundering, you know, here's this image, what are you doing here? It was very yeah. intimidating. Sure. You know, I get the holiness. I mean, take off your shoes, burning bushes, and the holiness of encountering or being with God. But there's an old covenant, and there's a new covenant, right? The veil in the temple, it's torn, and there's access. There was a shift in history you know, before the priest was instructed, they put a rope around his foot. Yeah, pull him out to, if he was to go into the holy of holies. And you, and you split the clean animal, and you walk oh, through. Yeah. I mean, all of all, that deal. All I of mean, that to approach God, right. right? To connect with God, to hear from God, to sacrifice mm-hmm. to God, and God changes the program. Right. I want to give you access. I'm actually going to take up residence in you. So if we're going to talk about prayer, we actually... The Holy we, of Holies we're talking about heart. We're talking about a relationship mm-hmm. in which he actually comes and takes residence in this new Holy of Holies. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think where I was so monologue focused, that's kind of how I was taught or how I perceived it anyway. It's a projection of requests and apologies, you know, to God, mm-hmm. kind of coming in on your knees. So therefore, God, I experienced him as very distant, and I didn't want to make him mad. You know, prayer was a part of that. You guys have heard me share this at the conferences. My perception of God, you know, that I got from church was kind of in those spaces. Right. And so I feel like in the 20th century, right, we're practicing pre-first century Old Covenant, Old Testament. It's an echo of it. You know, things, yes. You know, when you walk into a church and you're supposed to dip your knee and the sign of the cross, you know, on your chest. And I won't say the little phrase that I use to remember Mm -hmm. that, by the way. Spectacles is how it starts. But some (laughs) of you guys that are listening know the rest of it. Mm. But that's an echo of the approaching the Holy of Holies that you're talking about. And really, is God condensed and held into the altar at a church? Mm -hmm. I remember going to a church one time getting yelled at for walking up on the altar. It was even before I was saved, but I mean, I walked up. That's a sacred space. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. really? It's wood and nails. Well, why all this relates to prayer and conversation with God is if he's portrayed that way, and that's how some of us he's learned distant. him, then I'm not saying he's not powerful. Or he shouldn't and be he, And he's revered. not, it's not yeah. holy, but how do we perceive him is really the beginning of this conversation about prayer. Mm-hmm. Where is he? Is he mad? Is he distant? Are you not good enough? Mm-hmm to approach the Father. And so Jesus really makes a very large shift in the way that he relates to the Father and the way he invites us to relate to the Father. And so in this series, I'm looking forward to getting to that and exploring that. But I didn't wake up to, I mean, you talk about not growing up in church. You know, I'm thankful that I did. I honestly am very thankful that I did. And yet I'm walking with God to relearn some things and to unlearn yeah. Some things and to be, yeah, to overcome some of those agreements that I made, you know, even in the area of prayer, making agreements with the enemy that I can't talk to him. You know, he's mm-hmm. not approachable. Well, and when it, you think if, about If God, I do, he's going to get me. Yeah. I was just thinking that, you know, growing up, I had more of a Greek God, Jupiter, or if, if for Romans or Zeus, if you will, with the mm-hmm. lightning bolt. Mm hmm. You know, uh, image of God, you an mean? image of God in this. Not this, that you worshipped the no, Greek uh, gods. Okay, no, I did not. Okay, um, <laughs> but that, but was, that your, was the image, the imagery. Like he's going to strike you. Yeah, dead he's and... holding a lightning bolt, and <laughs> you know, I deserved some kind of punishment because of the things I was doing. That's what my mentality was. Mm. Sure, I needed to be punished and disciplined. Yeah, well, that's rough. You're not going to be loved until you get it right. Exactly. And so I, with you, Greg, I had that posture of, I've got to go work this out and then somehow present myself better. It's just really the antithesis of what Jesus was trying to accomplish, that we can approach the throne boldly. Right. I think I prayed to the Heavenly Father, too, which is interesting. When you think about it now, when we pray... Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, Jesus, the Trinity. Trinity. King Jesus, Tr- Trinities. and we're going to get to that, but I think that that was a big part of the early prayers is I'm talking to a father that's mad at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's not Jesus, it's not my brother. You know what I mean? It was more of the father with the lightning bolt. So in the context of what you're saying, in how we pray and how we, the Zoe team, talks with God, I think we're 
sharing with our listeners that you may need to debunk some things. Unsubscribe. You may need to change the way you see God. Mm -hmm. You may need to explore, well, how am I positioned before him? How does he feel towards me? Because if you think your boss is mad all the time, you try to avoid knocking on the door. And when his name comes up on your cell phone, you're like, oh, crap. Yeah, it's, oh. I mean, if your perception is your reality in many, many ways, then that may be the place to start for this remodeling or refurbishing of how we pray, is to take some inventory in how do you see God? How do you see yourself? How do you see Jesus? Did he pave the way? Did he make a way for intimacy with God, with the Father, Son, and Spirit? Yeah, I think that's a point. It's not confusing when you read what's real, what the reality is about the new covenant. Right. But the approaching the altar, approaching the throne, the Holy of Holies, thinking of that in the context of Old Testament, Mm -hmm. Old Covenant belief, it's a physical place, it's a place you go, that's where God is. You approach the throne with your head down, you know, with a rope attached to your leg in case right. something ha- they can drag you out of there. Right. I mean, that kind of belief, I think, as we touched on in the beginning of the podcast, is pervasive. Mm-hmm. Right. And the understanding that the Holy of Holies, the throne where Jesus resides, is in your heart. Yeah. Changes Ta- things. Yeah, it's not a projection or a talking Right. It's, to or at, you're actually talking with. He's it's, with it's, you. Yeah, the conversation is inside. Right. <laughs> Think and about that, the and contrast of mm-hmm. the beginning of history where God walked with Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. There wasn't the veil. They're our friends. Mm-hmm. Son love, and daughter. Yeah, I love friendship. that contrast to your point, SJ, of where it went mm-hmm. to so formal and you're going to die. And Yeah, this plays huge in where we've got to go because co- regents, to be stewards, to be given the ability to co-create, to manage creation. This idea, Greg, that you're talking about is the power and the authority. If our prayers, right, I remember this. I don't know if you were taught this, ACTS, A-C-T-S. Do you remember that as a way to pray? It's not a bad way to learn to pray. And I think, listeners, what we're trying to get after is there is an elementary way to pray. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray the elementary kind of prayer. There's a beginning. You got to learn somehow. Sure. You don't start on rockets. You start on little mechanical devices to start to learn how to... bicycles. Yeah, learn how things work, (laughs) learning how things work. And that's what we want to accomplish in some of this conversation as we explore more what prayer is, what it isn't. There is a stage where do it like this. Right. Now I lay me down to sleep or however we learn, but there is a progression. If you're still praying those prayers and you're 10, 20, 30 years in to your journey, yeah, something's in the way. And there's an invitation to more. Right. You're missing something and we don't want you to miss it because it's so good and it's so rich. Yeah. Yes, there's absolutely so much more and we want not only more for our listeners, right, but we want more. Right. Yeah. And we're still on the journey of figuring out how to be more intimate with God, how to be closer to Jesus in our prayer time and interaction yeah. with him just in general. Yeah. So here's the invitation. Here's what where we're exploring. I want to recover prayer as some chore and as some servitude and offering and thing. You just need to do it. Right. You know, it's really. The discipline. You, you just need and, to do it. Mm-hmm. To what we've learned to practice and are continuing to learn to mm-hmm. practice an intimate dialogue with the one who loves you most. The people that I love and care for, I've texted or talked to them already today. And it's 11 a.m. Yeah. They've heard from me, right? And if I'm a father, you know, can give good gifts to my kids, how much more does your father in heaven? This is what Jesus is trying to get across. The veil is torn, the distance is closed, and that the residence of the Trinity... We have a Trinity DNA as image bearers, and that is brought to life through the cross, resurrection, and then the ascension, the power and authority. That's what I want to talk about after the break, because that is the foundation for our relationship, our conversation, our intimacy with God. We have to get that right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he's your boss, and you're afraid to knock on his door or the phone call comes. And you know what the result of that is, Michael, before we go to the break again? Separation. Yeah. Distance. Yeah. 
isolation. Division, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Our perception oh, yeah. of God mm-hmm. is critical to our conversations with God. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, because you're going to talk to a jailer one way, but you're going to talk to a lover another way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On that note, let's take a break let's on the lover break. note. Yep. Holy, here we go again, Batman. Hey, all you superheroes. Shattered by the rat race? Shift down to Godspeed by going to the Heart of a Warrior Encounter. Zoe has three upcoming encounter events, April 29 to May 2nd in Lynchburg, Virginia, May 27 to 30th in Stoneville, North Carolina, and October 21st to 24th in Buena Vista, Colorado. To learn more and register, go to zoe.org forward slash events. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash events. Capes are not required. Welcome back to the Exploring More podcast, where we're talking about having intimate conversations with God, prayer, and debunking some things that have really gotten in the way. If it's now no barrier, the Holy of Holies is in us, the residences of God is now in us. That's great news. But if I'm bringing some of that old stuff into that and trying to work that into intimacy, it just won't work. You know how I know? Maybe you've got experience with that. I've got a lot of experience with that. And now I've had for almost 20 years Mm -hmm. a different experience, and I want to talk about who he is, who I am. That's where so much groundwork has to be done, Right. Mm -hmm. my perception of him. I believe such crazy things about God because it was my interpretation of boyhood, growing up in the church, and what I heard, like you said, if you're moving too quickly in a sanctuary, man, you'll get yelled at. Right. I think a lot of churches think that is the Holy of Holies Mm -hmm. versus it's a place for teaching and instruction and understanding, but the perception, the agreement, the experience that we have of being scolded in that place brings some kind of guilt and shame. Well, what are you going to do with that? How long is that going to stay? It's so subtle. It's like an allergy. It just kind of breaks out when you get around that thing. (laughs) It just kind of breaks out, right? I remember going to church. There were just Sunday mornings where my dad was wrangling three boys. Church was not a great experience. Sure. Putting everybody in the family station wagon. You be quiet back there. When we get in church, if you don't sit still, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, mom or dad kind of in that place. Hey, if you're good, right? This is a good boy, right? If you're a good boy, we'll go to pizza for lunch. I was (laughs) was always so much more interested in the donuts before and the lunch and the lunch destination afternoon running around in the woods it's Mm -hmm. a very very challenging thing to get some of that stuff off of you from boyhood whether you were baptist presbyterian methodist catholic it doesn't matter the structure can land the same on all boy and girl hearts that become men and women and if this stays in its place it's going to be a problem it's easy to see how that structure filters into prayer very challenging to Mm -hmm. get close and intimate with something you don't trust right Michael, there's this quote in your book on page 54, and I'm leading a group of guys through Heart of a Warrior, and it's just been such a pleasure. We're on page 54, and we're a year in, if that tells you anything about the depth and the awesomeness of the book and of these men's lives. Fire pit rangers represent, or that are listening. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's here's a good name. the quote, Jesus lived kindly, lovingly, and fiercely during his mission here on earth. His teaching was about showing us how the kingdom works, how love works, and how to have life in the kingdom of God. He taught that life is connected to him, and if we are going to sign on for that life, then we are going to need some deep healing. We will need everything taken out of the way, the lies, the shame, our false self that hinders our friendship with him and our enjoyment of the one for whom we were made. I love that, Michael, Mm -hmm. our enjoyment of the one. Any hurtful way that opposes God's intentions for us as men needs to be identified, treated, and healed. You know, in this chapter four, you know, we're really starting to set the groundwork for that healing. And you've done that beautifully in chapter three and four, and then it moves well into four and five and six and all that. But, Mm -hmm. you know, as we're talking about connecting with God in prayer, and getting the things that are in the way out of the way so we can do that debunking, if you will, some of the things. I think it all starts with intimacy with God. 
Yeah. And so if we're going to have true life, as we all know, and it's almost churchy, I guess, to say, well, it all starts with Jesus, but it really is. There's a reason why. Mm -hmm. Because it does. Life is And Jesus him. says one of the craziest things to his friend when he's asked, will you show us the Father? Yeah. Well, if you've seen me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I, I mean, am your Father. <laughs> 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 so when I go back to the garden and I look at this fatal mistake that Adam makes, I mean... You mentioned in the first half of this episode, in the garden, they walked with him. They experienced the presence of God in a way that we long to, I believe, yes. and that we will one day. And yet, when the fruit was bitten, when that happened, they hid. And when the Father, God, comes, where are you? Big question. Right. I was ashamed, and so I hid. I mean, who of us haven't felt that when we make a mistake? that we hid from our father, earthly fathers, hid from our mothers. Yeah. Hid in the closet. Oh, I remember doing that one Hid time. from our heavenly father. Yeah. 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 So to your point, do you think that in us, I was ashamed, so I hid. Is that the number one barrier to intimacy with God? Yeah. Read Brene Brown and all her stuff on shame. Yeah. Read the effects of guilt and shame. It's very hard to be intimate with somebody or anything that is in some way you believe, you've come to believe, is it's going to be punitive. It's going to be punishment. It's going to be painful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's enough to just know that you made the mistake, but to right. not experience or receive love in those mistakes, but rather punishment. I think back to the shack where Mac is really having it out with Papa, and he's saying, well, aren't you all about punishment? Aren't you all about Smiting, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> oh, oh, mighty oh, smiter. Smiter. oh mighty smiter, right from Bruce, Bruce Almighty. Almighty, and Papa says to Mac, Mac, you got it all wrong. Sin has enough consequences of its own. It's not mine to punish. That's not me. That's not the way I am. It's mine to rescue. I want to love you through that. So that's bottom yeah. line, foundation, baseline for how we pray. I think what we've experienced in the last fifteen to twenty years is a real recovery of who God is, how he sees us, healing wounded wounded moments, wounded messages. I mean, getting that kind of tenderness and vulnerability, trying him out, finding him faithful, hearing his voice for the mm -hmm. first time. That's where I heard his voice for the first time was in healing. Right. And Me it too. began to change my deep inner perspectives about God and I found myself wanting to bring more and more of my history to God and let him talk, mm -hmm. which is what we have to talk about when it comes to prayer. It's not the monologue that we were told right. or sold. It's interesting when you bring up the shack, I need to go back and rewatch it. It's been several years. But in my recollection, part of Mac's issue was, yeah, how he thought God thought about him, Right. And that was, in the way, a barrier of intimacy. But part of Mac's issue, too, was the judgment he felt against people who had wronged him. And that was a barrier to God right. for mm -hmm. him as well, because he's holding on to this bitterness and anger rather than moving to a place of forgiveness. So it's almost like we're doing a podcast about prayer, but we could do another one, or we could just continue the conversation, mm -hmm. but barriers to intimacy— yeah, you yeah, know, because, so because if that, what you said, Michael, that shame and feeling ashamed about what you did, not you, Michael, personally, but you just generally people have done. Or, were, the, done, or it, were done to you. That, okay, that I'm ashamed about what happened, happened to, me to me or what mm -hmm. I did, whichever one it is, that's the number one barrier to intimacy. You know, it's almost like we could start there and just talk about What's in the way? What are the barriers to intimacy? Why is God distant from you? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, because that's what's addressed in that story. And it is mm -hmm. a story, mm -hmm. right? An illustration. I love the quote of, who's the author, man? Uh, Paul wrote Young. The book. Paul, yeah. They ask him, is this a true story? And what they want to know is, did it really happen? Mm -hmm. And he says, no, it didn't really happen. But that doesn't mean it's not, not true. true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it is really, I think if it comes down to, Michael, the thing that's in the way, whatever the barrier is for you listeners to intimacy, that's where the injury is. Mm -hmm. That's where the woundedness is. Mm -hmm. That's where we need Jesus to kind of stick his finger in there and go, does it hurt right there? Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. 
to continue to keep that in place, put that on the table, keep it there, and then to explore how we were taught or how we saw prayer. There's the condition of our hearts and our view and how we feel about God and how we think, have come to believe that He feels about us. That's an incredible, important place to explore. So we need to talk about this graduation, this movement to explore what is my perception of God? What do I believe that He thinks or feels towards me? Mm -hmm. What is primary in the Old Testament is obedience and servitude to God. That's where I think all of us start. To some degree, all of us have gotten a little pharisaical training, right? And that's not a great thing, actually. Do you need a pharisectomy? Yeah. I actually wrote about that in King Me, Greg. Funny you should say that. (laughs) So with that in place, there's an important reality when you're young. You want your daughters and sons to obey you, Mm -hmm. because I told you so. Right. There's just a part of that. Because you know what's best for them, theoretically. You know, if your parents in your 40 are still operating that way, no way that that relationship is good. Right. So you're growing them to make choices. You're parenting them to be able to wisely step in. That is this progression. So to graduate from kind of Old Testament living to New Testament living is to move towards friendship, intimacy, what it is to be in love with God, to be loved by God, to experience a deep friendship with God, as Jesus said. Mm -hmm. I no longer call you my servants, I call you my friends. I don't think that was just for those guys. No. I think that's the offer, that's the graduation. I think what you're saying, Michael, is moving from a place of servanthood and obedience and moving to a place of intimacy and friendship with God and with Jesus is part of what God wants for us. You know, and we all have to start in a place where, you know, it's like, this is a football, right? (laughs) You know, Vince Lombardi. And we all kind of have to start there, have that understanding. But to stay there into your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, that is not what Jesus came for. That is not the abundant life he promises. That's not what he wants for us. He wants more intimacy with us. Mm -hmm. And so part of that is, like we've been talking about, you know, debunking some of the things that we've believed in that first part of life, that first part of our prayer mm-hmm. life, and moving to a place where we're more free in our prayer and our understanding about God. And part of that is power and authority. I was taught that God is all-powerful, God is the, mm-hmm. the authority, and that's not untrue. But what I was never shown, probably because I wasn't in church my, until I was 35, but even after I started going to church... Yeah, you may not get it there. I never got it as an adult either, was yeah. the power and authority that's granted to us as friends of Jesus, as beloved sons of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And it's just not taught, and being able to wield that authority, being able to wield that power... Yeah, when he sent really the not seven, talked about. When he sent the 70 out, right, he gave them power and authority to go do what he was doing. Or at the Ascension, which is probably the greatest example of power and authority being given over, he's basically like, all right, Michael, now you go do it Mm -hmm. in my name and with my blessing. Which is what we do with our own kids, right? I mean, we train them up. and empower them, mm -hmm. yeah, make choices. So we're getting into so many different elements of prayer. And so one is this intimate dialogue, Mm -hmm. this conversation with God. That's one. And then there's announcing, proclaiming, declaring. Mm -hmm. We got to talk about that in this series. And as you touched on, Matthew 28, what the struggle is in this conversation is it's all related. It's all connected. Conversation, language, right? We say this all the time because in our ministry, on our mission, we're wordsmiths. Words matter. They do. How you communicate and what you communicate, and I'm going to say it again, and how you communicate it. Right. Right. is all oh, man. critical. It's so relational. How many of us have heard? It's the core of relationship. Exactly. It's communication and conversation. Exactly. How many of us have heard? It's not what you said, it's, it's how, how you said it, it right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And no so doubt. what I heard you say, <laughs> you know, for those first 20 years of my life, mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, who God is and how he feels towards me, every service ended with an altar call. Every service ended with a reminder, you're not good enough, 
really to be here. So you better go get it right. So you, yeah, that's how I perceived it. Mm -hmm, Me too. And the performance life, right? Being a good boy was far more accessible to me than being a loved boy. And that's going to play in your conversations, in your intimacy, Mm -hmm. and and in your connectedness with God. Right. Yeah. Go get it right. Or, well, I'm going to be back here again next week, so Mm -hmm. I can go do whatever I want for the next six and a half days and get cleaned again next Sunday. And at some (laughs) point, this explains a lot, listeners, and at some point, when do you just walk away? Right. Because it's not If you can't do something... Yes, it's a merry-go-round. ...for so long, and it feels like you're coming to take your spanking, take your punch, you know... Get yelled at, or on the other side, just try to stay awake through the service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. and all of that makes for a very, very challenging prayer life when that is the predominant beliefs, attitudes, perspectives in your journey. So you asked me earlier, I do believe everything starts there. Mm-hmm. And actually, in prayer and in conversation with God, that's where He wants to go to remodel. Sure. That's where he wants to go prove different. That's where he wants to go show you. And so his ability to communicate with us is far larger than some altar call at the end. But do we see it? Do we have any inkling of how much communication God is actually up to? It's interesting Mm -hmm. because you're talking about the altar call, or as in the Baptist church, we called it the invitation. Invitation, right. Right. I love that word invitation. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite words. And I think about that, what is my invitation today? Because God's always inviting us into more, as we like to say it, exploring more. Mm -hmm. He's inviting us into more. And I think that's where guys get stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, they get stuck in that, well, there's not any more. This is all I've ever known. Mm -hmm. You got to go look at the four pillars of Zoe. Listen to the podcast. The podcast, yeah. yeah, Mm -hmm. The podcast on the four pillars. I mean, it's orientation. God's going to want to talk to you about who you are where you are and the good God's up to, the good he's up to in your life. That's what he's going to talk to you about. And so that's why it's such a pillar of Zoe, that orientation, that position, that who you are in the kingdom is everything to how you'll then relate to the king. Yeah. I remember my first movement into intimacy. And you guys have heard me tell the story before, Michael, just tell it briefly. I was at a retreat like our Heart of Warrior Encounters, and they sent us out and asked us the question, we'll ask God, SJ, what do you think of me? And what I heard, and again, just hearing in general was a challenge when you've been taught all the things we've been talking about this morning on the podcast. So what I heard was, you're my beloved son in Mm -hmm. whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I think about that, the intimacy and the kindness and how that word of intimacy healed so much of my perception of myself because of my sin stains and evil devices in my life, because of my perception of prayer. You know, it was almost like not only was the veil torn, but there was a new country to go and explore. Yeah. I love that the root of that or what sparked that, and it's true for many of us, was a question that was presented for you to go and bring to God. And so for the listeners, the question that I would propose is, if you perceive that there is a veil between you and God, who put it there? Right. It's a great question. It's good, SJ. Yeah. Because we're proposing, (laughs) based on what the scriptures say, that the veil is torn. So if you feel like there's a barrier between you and God, God didn't put it there. Right. Right. And in the next session, I want to talk a lot more about this power and authority thing. I mean, it's our part two of what may be three or four parts, because you're not going to wield that until you're secure in in your identity as a beloved son or beloved daughter. Mm -hmm. You have to not just know it academically. He wants you to know it intimately, experientially, that I'm crazy about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love being with you. Mm-hmm. I love, and I'm always with you. I am right. always with you. And not only is he our friend, but he's the king. Oh, yeah. There's rights he, and privileges. That's that right. With that, which I know we're going to talk about in yeah. the authority part. I want to wrap this up with a few paragraphs from the new book, King Me, because later in the book, the section of the ways of a good king, let's talk. Prayer often gets a bad rap. We know we should do it more, and yet we often feel as if the monologue we are offering God isn't working. 
Like when you're talking on your cell phone on one bar, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? To make matters worse, instead of a conversation, it feels more like a series of submissions to a suggestion box. Some request for a few favors and some ideas suggesting of how I'd like God to run my life. No wonder we wonder if prayer really works. And there lies a big part of the problem. For so long, I saw prayer as something to work rather than having a conversation, sharing with God what I think and feel and inviting God to share with me what he thinks and feels towards me and my life's journey. For far too long, talking to God was the unfortunate position I took rather than talking with God. Good kings learn to dialogue with God. I used to believe 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing, was impossible. Not anymore. In our heads, there is an ongoing conversation, a dialogue. Everybody knows it. And inviting God into that space a space in which he already exists and is very well acquainted with, is one of the smartest things I've ever done. I believe prayer is bringing God into an already ongoing conversation being held within me. I heard Graham Cook once say, ask the Holy Spirit, what is it you want to be for me now that you couldn't be for me any other time, place, or circumstance? And it was the great 20th century author, William Barclay, who wrote, commentaries on the scriptures that are still widely used today in seminaries around the world. He had this to say about prayer. We are trying not so much to make God listen to us as make ourselves listen to him. We are trying not to persuade God to do what we want, but to find out what he wants us to do. It so often happens that in prayer, we are really saying, thy will be changed when we ought to be saying thy will be done. The first object of prayer is not so much to speak to God, as it is to listen. That's good, Michael. It's really good. Nobody ever taught me that. Never. No. Yeah. Nobody invited us to pray that way. Yeah. Experience God that way. I think it was something that Jesus did. Yeah. And we're going to get to it in the next session. It's what Jesus did. And it's why the disciples asked him, teach us to do what you're doing. Right? Teach us how to pray. I don't know if they were watching his lips move. I don't know if he was just in solitude, if he was in that posture of listening, but he did it for hours and he was never alone. So if we can put that piece on the table and then maybe we can begin to move more and more towards these multiple, multifaceted spaces of prayer, because there's lots of kinds, there's lots of reasons, there's lots of ways, but we need to know in our heart of hearts, that's where he is. And in this crowded space called my thoughts, to learn how to listen for him, dial into him. To, right? We teach this at all our conferences. Do you believe that every thought is your own? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's going to lead, what, Greg, to a small life. That's a smaller story. Right? right? Often we are all pretty acquainted with the idea that the enemy tempts and the enemy lures. That sounds like something. That feels like something. Whatever that is in a person's life, it's communication. Temptation is communication, right? Amen? Yeah? Amen. How can he be the only one that has the microphone? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That's a whole other aspect of this thing. And what are you going to do about it? And what can you do about it? What can you? And that's what we want to talk about Mm -hmm. in the next session. Why power and authority? What does that look like? And how good it is to learn how to wield it. So we'll see you next time. Yeah, if you've got questions, comments, anything you want to share with us, shoot us an email, exploringmore at zoe.org. And if you would, on your podcast platform of choice, give us a share, give us a review, give us a like. really helps us get the word out there. Also, be sure, listeners, go to zoe.org forward slash events. We've got a number of events coming up, as we talked about in the break, but want to be sure you are able to check that out and take advantage of getting back together. Lord, thank you, Lord, that we're able to get back together again. And this COVID thing is easing. So check it out, zoe.org forward slash events. And any new listeners out there, we've got lots of free resources available on our website as well. Yeah, including the daily prayer. So go to the, and we'll be talking about about. that on the next session on Exploring More Podcast. See you next time. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Exploring More. The landing page for this podcast is zoe.org forward slash podcast. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash podcast, 
where you can find the show notes and various platforms to which we broadcast. You can also find us and the life of more by visiting Zoe on Uversion Bible app, Right Now Media, our Facebook page, and Zoe on Instagram and Twitter. Remember, with God there is always more, and you were made for more. Thank you.